Driving a manual transmission is a very delicate process, and doing it incorrectly can lead to huge repair bills. And if you don't drive a manual, well, still watch, because you might have one in your glove box. Oh. Why are you boring me? I'm right! And here are seven things you should never do in a manual. Like, subscribe, and let's go! Don't brake without engaging the clutch. Okay, it's actually okay to brake without engaging the clutch in many situations. When you're driving a manual transmission car and you need to slow down, brake pedal without touching the clutch if you're not coming to a full stop or if downshifting isn't immediately necessary. But you'll always wanna push the clutch before the engine starts to sputter or lug. Also, if you have an emergency stop where you slam on the brakes, push both the clutch and brake in at the same time if you can. When the clutch is engaged, meaning your foot isn't on the pedal, the engine is firmly connected to the transmission, which is permanently connected to the driving wheels. So during an ABS stop, your brakes will not only be trying to stop the wheels, but they'll be trying to stop the engine as well, which they'll be totally capable of doing. So brake and clutch together. Don't lug the engine. Okay, have you ever heard your engine groan like it's auditioning for a horror movie? probably because you're lugging it. Driving at too low of an RPM in a high gear is like asking a sloth to sprint. It's just not what it was designed to do. You're straining the engine and you can cause some real wear and tear over time. Shift down, so for example, from fourth to third and let the engine breathe. Back in the day, lugging the engine was a big no. Modern engines built with more modern tolerances and more sophisticated fuel and ignition systems don't mind nearly as much. And it's totally fine to select the highest gear possible when cruising on a flat surface to save a little fuel. But when you put the pedal down to accelerate or get up a hill and all you get is noise and not much else, knock it down a gear or two to get the engine closer to its most efficient range. And if you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button. Don't press clutch and brake at the same time in winter on snow. Ah, winter driving, great equalizer. Listen up. Pressing both the clutch and brake at the same time while driving on snow is like trying to walk on ice with your socks. You're asking to slip and spin, especially when headed downhill. Clutch and brake at the same time messes with your car's balance and traction, so be gentle and deliberate with those pedals and try to touch brake or clutch, but not both at the same time until coming to a complete stop. Keeping the engine engaged with the driving wheels is vital to reduce the chance of you locking up a wheel. In fact, when headed down an icy hill, for example, try to be in the lowest gear possible, where the lowest would be first, and try to avoid touching the brake as much as you can. Don't money shift. That's what it sounds like when you money shift. So, what is it? Well, a perfectly executed money shift is when you over rev the engine. So say you're in fifth, and you decide to downshift into fourth and accidentally slip it into second. If you release the clutch, the engine's RPMs are gonna shoot to the moon, and there's a good chance you're gonna send the engine to the grave. So to remedy this, turn your hand over so the palm is facing away from you. You'll have way less chance of missing fourth and pulling the shifter into second. More often than not, a money shift spells disaster, and our friend the rev limiter can't help you here. That works by cutting ignition timing and sometimes a combination of throttle and fuel. But when you jam the thing into too low a gear, there's no amount of ignition cut in the world that's gonna save you. Best case, you damage some valve train parts. But worst case? Yeah. Never release the clutch too quickly. Do not drop the clutch like it's hot. Always feather it smoothly. And if you feel the RPM dropping too much, press in the clutch a little to bring up the revs. Dumping the clutch without properly using the gas pedal will make you stall. And dumping the clutch when you're banging off the rev limiter will promote a burnout. Smoky. Which, yes, is a ton of fun, but also kills the tires and is technically illegal. So focus on being smooth with the clutch and the gas pedal, and your passengers will thank you. That being said, if you're hell-bent on launching your car, it's better to give it a few thousand revs and release the clutch very quickly, rather than slipping its face off. It's a lot cheaper to replace a set of tires than to replace a clutch. Also, if doing a burnout is the goal, a clutch dump is the only way, unless your car makes enough power to spin tires while it's already in gear and in motion. Heat is the enemy here, and the more time you spend slipping the clutch, the more heat you put into the poor thing, which leads us to the next thing not to do. Never use the clutch to hold you on a hill. Like Trav said, clutches are not cheap to replace, and if you use your clutch to play king of the hill, well, you'll be paying for it. 
push the clutch in, use the brake, and if you're worried about rolling back when you get started, engage the parking brake and slowly release it at the same time you engage the clutch to move forward. It'll take a little practice, but you'll get the hang. And, well, now it's time for the honorable mention. Don't let your hand linger on the gear stick. Doing so can unintentionally stress selector forks, synchronizers, and other internal components, accelerating their wear and tear, which, yes, can result in noisy gears or even gear selection failure down the road. After shifting, get your hand back on the steering wheel. For optimal safety, both hands belong on the wheel anyway. Okay, never park with your car in neutral, because if your parking brake fails, your car is uh, at gravity's mercy. Also, don't park in any gear but first or reversed. If you park in, say, fourth gear, it's a longer ratio which spells trouble. Just watch this. Also, put the vehicle in first gear when you park the nose uphill. Use the reverse gear when the nose is downhill. And always, always use the parking brake. Except between hot laps on a racetrack. Then it's brakes off. Don't rest your foot on the clutch pedal. Resting your foot on the clutch? <laughs> Bad idea. It's not an ottoman. This habit puts unnecessary pressure on the clutch release bearing, creating friction and leading to faster wear. The result? A noisy, failing clutch and a costly repair bill. So keep that foot off the clutch unless you actually are using it. Never leave your car in gear at a red light. Okay, by leaving your car in gear at a red light, it means you have to keep the clutch pedal glued to the floor. Not only will your left leg start cramping after a while, that release bearing we just talked about, yeah, it is working overtime. Toss the stick into neutral and just keep your foot on the brake. Your left leg and your wallet will thank me. Don't coast. Think coasting downhill in neutral saves fuel? Think again. Modern cars are efficient enough that this old trick is outdated. That sophisticated ECM will turn the fuel injectors completely off, saving maximum fuel and, more importantly, coasting is a risk. When your car is in neutral, you lose engine braking and can't accelerate quickly in emergencies. You're also more likely to overheat your brakes on a descent, not practicing how to parallel park. Yes, parallel parking is already hard, but it's 10 times harder in a manual, especially on a hill. Set up some cones and learn how to parallel park. If you can parallel park like a pro, you're ready to keep stepping up your skills. So you'll want to continue improving. Driving manual, it's an art form. And once you have the basics covered, learning how to rev match, meaning downshifting and matching the higher speed of the engine seamlessly, or heel towing, meaning braking, clutching and downshift and blipping the throttle with your heel to rev match, and clutch dumping, where you rev the engine up and dump the clutch properly for some sideways fun, although that last one will prematurely wear your drivetrain, so you've been warned. Yeah, but it's so much fun, I think it's worth it. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, and all these skills will take your driving experience to a whole nother level. R does not stand for race. I, yeah, it seems trivial, but I had a friend that thought the R on his shift knob meant race when learning how to drive stick. Engaging reverse at any forward speed is bad, but when you're on the highway, it is catastrophic. Luckily, most cars won't let you do it, but I said most. Let's not find out. Grab the bull by the horns. <laughs> Just don't do the two-finger shift. Yes, transmissions are delicate, but to get the precise shifts, you need to cup the shifter knob and shift to the correct gear with authority. Poke your pinky out for some style points, but you should still pull the shifter like you would a baseball. So are you guilty of doing any of these, or do you have any to add? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed, hit the like button and subscribe if you're new and turn on that notification bell, and check out this ideal vid up here on automatics, what you shouldn't do, or whatever YouTube recommends you watch next. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.